If you feel like your digestion is too slow and you're hoping to speed things up, in most cases where someone feels like their digestion is too slow, they're really dealing with issues like either like some bloating or discomfort or indigestion or even like some constipation problems like, yeah, I just pooped last month. It's really not going that great. And the confusing part is that there really are a variety of issues that can create this slowing down of the digestive process. So it's not going to be the same answer for every person. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand the most common underlying causes that can slow things down and steps you can take to get things moving. Come on! TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now when we're talking about speeding up digestion, keep in mind that it's possible for digestion to be moving too fast. Like you don't want to win the race of I'm going to digest the fastest because if everything is just screaming through the system, there's no time for you to assimilate the nutrients that are in that food that you're eating. So you don't want to win this race. So if your digestion happens to be moving too quickly, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on how to slow down digestion. But in this video, we're going to talk to the folks that need some help speeding it up. Because when things are moving too slowly, that can also restrict your ability to assimilate nutrients because of what's creating that slowdown. So when we're talking about speeding things up, we're going to start right here in the stomach with our stomach acid or, or hydrochloric acid. And the reason that this is important is because things will move through this intestinal tract at a pace according to its acidity level. So it's dependent on the pH of all this stuff moving through the intestinal tract. So this stomach acid is very important because things will go slower if they're leaning more on that alkaline side, if they're not quite as acidic as they're supposed to be. So the thing is, is that it's very common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid today. And a lot of people say to me, oh, well, I make too much stomach acid. I got to take this PPI because I got this acid reflux from too much stomach acid. And, and that's what a lot of advertisers want us to believe. But acid reflux in most cases is actually caused by not enough stomach acid. We need stomach acid to trigger this little valve to close so the small amount we have isn't coming back up and burning us. I'm not going to dig into that too much in this video, but if this is new information for you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on why do I have acid reflux. You really need to understand that if you're having any kind of reflux issues. But if somebody's taking some type of antacid or some type of PPI that turns off the body's ability to make stomach acid, well then there's not going to be enough acid in that stomach. That acid is there for a reason. The acid is there to help us acidify that food so that we can break it down and get the nutrients out of that food. That's, that's why we eat the food. So we really want to be able to break that down. But so that's one of the most common issues when we're looking at things moving too slowly because the starting block is broken. The first step of acidifying those things is not working correctly. So this acidity level really can dictate how fast things are moving through the system. Now one thing to think about is that a lot of people aren't taking any type of medication or antacids or anything to turn off stomach acid but they're not making stomach acid for a wide variety of other reasons. Like if the body is too stressed, that can push that body too far into this sympathetic fight or flight state of the autonomic nervous system. And in that state, the body is not as good at making this hydrochloric acid stuff. The body needs to be in the parasympathetic rest and digest state to be able to make that hydrochloric acid. So if somebody's freaking out all the time and they're all stressed out, they may have a hard time making that stomach acid. Also, if the body is overly stressed, maybe the person is dealing with some type of infection or some major problem, maybe the body doesn't have enough resources to function correctly and it's kind of stressed about that. There's a variety of issues that can push the body into a stress state, even if the person is all chill and I'm good, ah, no problem here, but the body's stressed out and it can create that same result. So there's a lot of reasons that someone may not be making enough stomach acid. And when we're talking about the stomach, I'll also hear from people that'll tell me, well, I have delayed gastric emptying and that sounds really fancy. So that's probably some whole other problem, right? And we need to think about this because when I lost my voice for eight years, one of the 23 doctors that I saw gave me a medication that was specifically meant to help speed up gastric emptying. He wanted to empty that stomach faster 
so that stuff would not reflux back up and burn me. But when we have a stomach here whose job, remember, is to acidify that food and then empty it out here into the duodenum so that the bile can come down and neutralize those acids. So that's the stomach's job. So if the food is not getting acidified, why would the stomach empty it out? The guy down here, hey, I'm the emptier. Are we gonna empty anything? I'm supposed to empty. They told me specifically to empty things. When are we gonna do that? But why would it do that if it's not acidified first? That's the job of the stomach. Acidify and then empty. So when it's not getting acidified, it'll kind of sit there and rot and ferment. That's how it breaks down. And that process takes a lot longer than acidifying the food. So of course there would be a delay in the gastric emptying. But what we see is when people start to acidify the stomach, all of a sudden it starts to empty out a little bit faster. Isn't that kind of weird? Now I'm not a doctor and I'm not telling you that's the problem of your gastric delayed emptying, but wouldn't that make a little bit of sense? But if that's the case, they can take steps to acidify that stomach manually. A lot of people will use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Um, that can acidify the stomach a little bit. That can be helpful if somebody just needs a little bit of a boost. But most people who feel like, man, my digestion is slower than Tuesday, they're really gonna need to supplement with some betaine HCL capsules. And that can help really acidify the stomach the way that it's supposed to be acidified. And you really want to know how to use HCL the right way. And my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapter three, kind of walks you through how to do that the right way and figure out the right dose for you and your specific situation. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And then you can just jump to chapter three and that'll walk you through how to acidify that stomach the right way for you with some betaine HCL. Because the amount of acid that a person may be making is gonna vary from person to person. So you wanna understand how to adjust this to figure out how to get this right so that you can acidify things here so that when they come down here, they're already in that acidic direction. So the next step that's important in this digestive process is the bile that comes out of this gallbladder and comes down to help neutralize those acids. So the acids have to be neutralized and if they're not, they're gonna stay in a very acidic state. And remember, it moves really fast when things are way too acidic. So if they're not getting neutralized by this bile, there's some bicarb that comes out of the pancreas a little bit to help neutralize too, but this bile in the gallbladder is really the biggest player. So we need that bile to come down and help neutralize those acids. And it's that connection of the acidity hitting the alkalinity from the bile that creates like this sizzle that really helps us bust that food apart and get all the nutrients out of that food. So there's a lot of people that will say, oh, if you're constipated, you should supplement with ox bile. And that's like getting more bile in your system because bile is this lubricant, they're gonna tell you. And so when you get that lubricant in, then all of a sudden you're gonna poop like a champion and it's gonna shoot right out. But the reality is that it can be a lubricant. And for people that are constipated, maybe one out of a hundred when they use ox bile will improve that constipation. But what we need to remember is that the bile is alkaline. So remember, that's going to slow down the process. So we don't want to add a whole lot more alkaline in there if things are already moving too slow. We want to focus more on making it more acidic so it will move at a faster pace. The tricky part about all of this is that the bile really is required. And it's very common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly and then it won't come down and help neutralize those acids. So if someone really doesn't have their bile flowing correctly, they can increase the acidity level, but then they're not going to get that collision, that sizzle that really helps us get all the nutrients out of the food and give the body the nutrients it needs to make hydrochloric acid. So a lot of times this stomach acid is not being produced because the bile got too thick to flow correctly and now they're not digesting correctly on either side. So it's very hard for the body to access all the minerals and all the nutrients in that food, the minerals that the body needs to be able to make that hydrochloric acid. So we really do want bile to flow correctly, but if things are going too slow, you probably don't wanna supplement with ox bile and put more alkaline stuff in there because that has the ability to really slow things down even more. If someone still has their gallbladder, we like to see them take steps to thin out the bile so that it will flow naturally and they're not putting more ox bile through the stomach because when the ox bile supplementation goes in the stomach, now they're going to alkalize that stomach. Now, if somebody's lost their gallbladder, they probably really do need to supplement with some ox bile, 
but we have people do that away from food. So it's not alkalizing this stomach acid in the stomach when it should be acidifying. And we'll put a link in the description below for our video on how to use ox bile the right way if somebody's lost their gallbladder and needs to go that route. Just keep in mind, don't really view ox bile as a lubricant like people are going to tell you. It's the alkaline side of digestion and alkalizing things is gonna slow this process down for most folks. Now, the third issue that can really create problems in slowing this down is some type of bacterial overgrowth. And this can happen either in the stomach or the small intestine. And it can be a fungal yeast kind of situation too, but the most common situation is a bacterial overgrowth. And if it's an H. pylori situation or something that happens in the stomach, that not only can they restrict your body's ability to make that stomach acid, but the waste from a lot of these different types of bacteria is alkaline as well. So it further alkalizes wherever they are, either in the stomach or in the small intestine. And maybe everything in the stomach is working fine, but if you have a SIBO issue or a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and there's all this alkaline waste down here, that's really alkalizing this area of the intestinal tract and that's gonna slow things down. Even if the stool was doing fine and moving at an okay pace, it was acidic enough, but once it got down here, here, all this alkaline waste really neutralized all those acids and can really slow things down. So if there's an issue in the stomach or the small intestine that's creating all this alkalinity from the waste, we like to see people take steps to wipe out some of those bad guys and using some type of antimicrobial and it could vary what you want to use. Some people use garlic or if it's in the stomach we like to use D-limonene which is an orange peel extract. Or maybe somebody uses mastic gum to kind of pull out all these bad guys. Uh, celery juice is another thing that can help kind of reduce a bacterial overload in that intestinal tract. That can be beneficial for some folks. But we really need to take this down a notch or when we take steps to acidify the stomach, it's still going to get slowed down from all this alkaline environment that this overgrowth is creating. And what's interesting is that a lot of times this overgrowth came in because there wasn't enough stomach acid. The stomach acid isn't this there to help us acidify the food. It's the barrier that keeps all the bad guys out. So when they come in on the food that we're eating, they die in an acid bath. So a lot of times we'll see an overgrowth here or in the stomach when there's not enough stomach acid in the first place. Another thing to think about is that it's this gut flora in the large intestine here, all the good guys that help make enzymes for us, that help us digest and break down our food and really get more nutrients out of that food. So if they're kind of overcrowded by all these bad guys that have come in and, and set up camp, that can restrict the body's ability to create those enzymes in the digestive tract. And that's just one form of those enzymes. So that brings us right down to another thing that can slow things down is a person doesn't have enough enzymes, either because there's not being created or maybe they just don't have enough in the system they can kind of get diminished as we age. And if you're eating raw foods, you can get more enzymes out of those raw foods. But even the raw foods have less enzymes in them today just because of the way they're grown and because of the soil and all those things. But if a person's eating cooked or processed foods, they should probably be supplementing with digestive enzymes to help take care of this and help really break down those foods and get things moving along at a better pace. So a lot of people will just supplement with a, some type of broad spectrum digestive enzyme. I'm not going to give you a brand or anything. You'll have to do some research to figure out what's going to be right for you. But when you can supplement with some enzymes, that can help this process out. And when you wipe out any bad guys that are there, if there is an overgrowth, then using some probiotics for a few months can help replenish this good gut flora that can, that can then help you digest your food even better. And the last thing to think about when speeding up the digestive process is what about water? Is there enough water? Is the person drinking enough water? Because it's very common for a person not to drink enough water. But the placement of where that water is going is also really important. And it was Dr. Emanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that the body has this natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. So during the day, we should be in a catabolic state where the body is very good at creating energy and kind of keeping us going all day and breaking down tissue so that it can be rebuilt. And then at night, we should move into this anabolic state where the body is very good at sleeping and resting and rebuilding and repairing. So both of these states are great. The problem is it's very common for someone to get stuck in one of these states most of the time, or maybe they're just pushed way too far into that state. So if a person is really stuck in this anabolic state most of the time, 
it has, creates this problem where it sends too much water to the kidneys and not enough to the bowels. So now the bowels are going to get harder and drier and slower and more difficult to move. So you can see a person could be drinking enough water, but if they're really pushed in this anabolic state, then they're going to send it all through the kidneys. They might be getting up four or five times a night just to pee because the body's sending so much water to the kidneys and not enough to the bowels. So that's just something else that we need to think about when we're thinking about the possibilities of things that can slow down what we're calling this digestive process. Some of it is just a matter of things not moving because of the acidity level of them or something else in the system slowing them down. So you can see we really have to look at a number of things when we're trying to speed things up. But for most people where things just seem to be moving too slow, it's about acidifying things a little bit more. Whether that be acidifying the stomach correctly or acidifying this environment here just to help things move along a little bit faster if it's being alkalized by some type of bacterial waste or just really just not having enough stomach acid. So if you feel like it's this lack of stomach acid that may be creating the problem for you, you can jump over right now and check out our video on how to increase stomach acid. Or if you feel like maybe you're leaning too far on that anabolic side, you can check out our video on understanding an anabolic imbalance. I can't wait to hear about your results.